And, um, you know, uh, so then there's a subtle shift when you find out that people do view what you as different than them. And that's, that's called the double vision. Um, isn't it Du Bois that talked about that? The double consciousness, that was it. Yeah. When you get that double consciousness, when you realize that, yeah, for yourself, you're normal, and for other people, you're like a little off the normal. Yeah. So that is what my essay was about, and I didn't even know the term double consciousness, but I will add it to my vocabulary. <laughs> Um, but it is very short compared to your book, but I gave you a copy of that. So I love it. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so when, you know, talking about cultural um, appropriation versus cultural pre appreciation, okay, um, there's a conversation that can go all the way from people who think that you should just not do anything at all that pertains to other cultures, which I think is a bit of a cop-out, right? Um, to people who feel like you can just do anything that you want to with other cultures. And then there's all these different like shades of uh, gray or whatever shades of color in between. Now, you know, some people use their fear of misre misrepresenting people from different cultures as an excuse to not write about them, which is why you have people writing stories that are about New York or San Francisco where everybody's a white person and you know when you live there, that's not what you see, you know? So people for years have used this as an excuse to eliminate POCs from different types, people of color from different types of things. Like for example, in um, Doctor Strange, which is a movie, um, they changed a character that was an Asian man to a, uh, you know, genderqueer, I believe, um, white person that was, uh, I forget the actress's name. And they said that the reason they did that was because when they gender swapped the character, they did not want to have an Asian dragon lady stereotype, which they felt would be what they were doing if they had an Asian woman. Now, this is a cop out, right? I'm not going to have an Asian woman because I don't want it to be a stereotype. So, that is, you know, what we're talking about is how do you include different other people in your world that you're writing about, or that you're creating as a writer, as a filmmaker, as a storyteller, as a Rio, without disrespecting them and, you know, why we don't want to just eliminate people that are different from us. Well, I, I, for one thing, I think, and I, by the way, I've done a lot of panels at a lot of conferences, and I always tell them that it's a panel, uh, in any area of this discussion to buy <laughs> this book because it's a wonderful book. It's not like a big giant book. It's, it's right, just the right size and amount to really get people started in the right direction with it. I'm gonna grab it real quick because I have it. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I think of it as lazy. If you say, lazy writing to me is meaning that you're not putting thought and effort into it, if you just resort to stereotypes. And you don't have to be white to do that. You could be writing anything, and if it's not something you've lived your life in, and you resort to a stereotype, then to me, that is lazy writing. So, you know, that's why I think it's so important to have discussions about it, to have people understand that there are books and, and, and information out there in order to go to the place to start with the fact that one, every person is human to start with. Mm -hmm. And every human has love and fear and desire and wishes and things that they will. And then once you go into that, then you start talking. You can do some real basic, and I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Easy talk about what. But I'll just talk about, for example, a story that I wrote where I decided I wanted to make a character to be in a wheelchair. Why? Because I've never written a character in a wheelchair, and I thought it would be something different. And I like to entertain myself when I'm writing, because literally, if I'm bored, I'm going to write. And what I did to do that was I went to the internet, I read blogs of people who have been in wheelchairs since birth, and they're talking about how they feel in society and how they're treated. And then I went to a web, a YouTube things on how to learn to be in a wheelchair, how to move, because I have a chair in my office on wheels, because I wanted to have the motion right. I didn't want to assume, how do I know what it is? Like, you know, language I wanted to get right. 
And then um, I also had a fight scene in there, and I found videos on fighting in a wheelchair. So again, to at least steep those parts of the story in something that made sense. Unfortunately, the last thing I didn't have, I didn't have time to do, but also it needs to be done, is when you have that, to have someone in a wheelchair read the story, to make sure that you have it without knowledge or thought, use some language or some stereotype that doesn't make sense. And um, I think that is the way you can write anything. You don't have to take a 10 year thing on how Alaskans live to have an Alaskan character in your book, but you can understand what it's like to be an Alaskan by doing some research and other things, which Nisi can talk more about than I can. Yeah, well, we, um, I teach online about this stuff, and I teach in person as well. Um, and I do some stuff that's uh, expanding from the book. Uh, which which Sumiko has a copy of down there. So um, in the book there are exercises and uh, there are uh, discussions about tools that you need to do this well, better than say uh, Janine Cummins, um, who wrote American Dirt. Um, but you, you can actually do a better job than her. Uh, I would say research is a big part of it, and we, we teach a whole unit on research. I would say that getting a sensitivity reader is a big part of it. Um, I, a sensitivity reader is someone who um, is sensitive to the issues around representation of people who are not the mainstream, who are not the dominant paradigm, as we call it. Um, I will say uh, concerning 